Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web, and today we're gonna uncrate the ARFA 91. What's up, Speed Axe fam? Before I give you the full download on this brand new HJC, ARFA 91, do me a favor and subscribe to the Speed Addicts channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the new gear releases. We're always getting first looks at new gear and proof is in the pudding here. This thing just landed the brand new ARFA 91. Now, one other thing, if you'd like to purchase one of these helmets from us here at speedaddicts.com, we make that real easy. There's a link in the description below to shop for this brand new ARFA 91 or any other parts or gear you might need for your next two wheel adventure. So HJC, if you've been riding more than a few minutes, you've definitely heard the name, you've seen these around. Number one helmet manufacturer by volume in the world, so they claim. Um, We've come to expect a lot out of our ARFA line. So the HAC ARFA line is their premium offering. These are their top tier helmets. You get an extended warranty, you get an extra two years for a total of five years on all the ARFA helmets and just a higher level of materials, fit and finish. Uh, they roll out their best feature set for all their ARFA helmets. And this ARFA 91 is no different. The price tag is premium, of course. You're gonna come in at 549 to make one of these yours. Now. That is a lot of money, but compared to some of those ultra premium modular helmets out there on the market today, say the Neotech 2 or Schubert C5, you're gonna save a couple hundred bucks compared to those guys. You're getting a lot of the same features. You're getting a very quiet modular built to all the latest specs and uh, also integrated Bluetooth. We're gonna go over it all in detail here. Hang on. First up, the shell construction. PIM Evo shell. This is their proprietary composite blend of airman fibers, carbon Kevlar fiberglass weave. That means it's going to be light compared to some of its peers, hopefully, um, especially polycarbonate helmets. Now this, we weighed this helmet, it's coming in at three pounds, eight ounces, that is 3.5 pounds. Now anything closer to three and a half pounds than four in the modular helmet world means it's light. Uh, modular helmets are heavier because of the mechanisms required to lift up this chin bar and also these drop down sun visors, which uh, the ARFA 91 has. Um, all those, those extra moving parts here tend to add weight and a lot of modular helmets, again, creep up to that four pound um, mark and not here. So you're saving some weight. This is compatible with the second gen of the HJC smart communicators. We're gonna show you exactly where and how those plug in. The latest gen are very nice. They're made by Senna. We'll show you a little bit more about that later. The helmet is DOT certified. Intermediate oval head shape fits like most HJCs out there. If you've worn an HJC helmet in the past, you probably will take the same size here. True to fit, intermediate oval head shape should be very straightforward when you're ordering over at speedaddicts.com. Go by that HJC sizing chart. You're gonna see sizes extra small, up to two extra large. They, you know, we'll maybe see if they roll out some larger sizes later, but for now, it's extra small through 2X, so if you have a larger head, you may be out of the equation. Now, remember when you're shopping for helmets online, you really should only be shopping at one place. That's here at speedaddicts.com because we offer no cost returns. You have any issues with the fit, you're gonna get a free return label within a few clicks. All you have to do is live in the lower 48 states, make sure the helmet's brand new with all the original tags, bags, and packaging, and you're gonna get a free return exchange. Whatever you need to do, give us a shot and we'll treat you like family. Okay, let's do the deep dive on the R for 91 here. There is a lot to go over, so Hang tight and we will show you all the goodies. First up, we always start with ventilation here. And I like what they did with the ventilation. They've used these enormous paddle vents. You see one up here on top, very futuristic, cool design, very slabby. The cool thing about vents like this is they're very easy to actuate, easy to find. You're just gonna reach on the top of your head. Even with gloves on, you're gonna find this big paddle. It is all the way on or all the way off, no little tabs or cheap vents to break off or to try to work with your gloves on very easy. Down at the bottom, you have another big slab. This is a paddle vent all the way up, all the way down. Uh, you choose on that chin bar ventilation. Another cool vent that they put here is uh, this, this temple vent, or I guess it's more of a cockpit vent because it's not venting through the EPS right at your temple. What it's doing is it's it's venting in that space in between that drop down visor and your shell and the EPS, and it's extracting that hot moist air out of your cockpit area. It's gonna help keep the face shield uh, clear and keep you cool. Works in combination 
with your uh, chin bar vent down here. So really smart, well-designed ventilation package. Again, these are all the way off or all, all the way on. And you do notice they put a little um, turbulence uh, grill here or, or speed bumps. I don't know if those are for show or if they actually produce results in a wind tunnel. We'll have to ask those guys over at HJC and get an answer on that. Now on the back, beautiful arrow work here. We have two sets of vents. You have uh, extractors. You have your top one that is active. You can switch that on and off. And then underneath this diffuser, you're getting more exhaust ventilation for a great Venturi or vacuum exhaust that's gonna pull the hot air out. So this helmet's great in both cool temps because you can shut most of that ventilation down, but also it's gonna ventilate great on those warmer days. And of course, because it is modular, you can always flip up the chin bar and get even more air. So let's look at the face shield here. You're getting a detented, sturdy, uh, injection molded shield that is pin lock ready. You notice these little tabs right here. So the pin lock insert is included in the box. Um, it's going to install on the inside of your face shield to create a dual pane system to reduce or mitigate fog if fog's an issue for you. You're gonna be covered there. And again, they're including that at this price point, which is what we would expect. Uh, the shield itself is not fog treated, but the internal sun shield is. Now let's move on to that internal sun shield that I just mentioned. And there's a very unique feature that we've only seen on uh, a few of the new HJC helmets. And that is that that sun visor is adjustable. So <clears throat> let's see here, let's flip it back down. It's actuated here on this side. So all the way down is gonna pull it down. Now you can adjust how far down the sun shield goes and um, with three settings over here on the side. So I'm gonna flip this over real quick and show you how this works. Now this is nice because not everyone's eyes and nose are in the same uh, place. If you've ever had a, a helmet with a drop down face shield and it's hit you in the wrong spot, you're gonna be happy about this. No more light leaking past you or bumping into your nose. So right now we are fully adjusted up. There's a switch underneath this comm system uh, receiver here. You're gonna pull that off and you see this little switch right here. If I want the shield to come down further, I'm gonna, whoop, I have to retract it first. You're gonna switch this down. There's three settings. We're just gonna go all the way down. It's gonna allow that, that shield to come down further. And as it comes down further, it's also gonna come out a little bit more away from your face. So very cool, very smart. Uh, something that uh, they're only including on some of their newer premium helmets. And uh, that's nice, because I've definitely had helmets with sun visors, internal sun shields that don't hit me, right? They don't come down far enough. So they're solving for that there. Let's look at another kind of interesting feature about the Arfa 91, and that is how the chin bar comes up. So <clears throat> I guess not how, but where. So you have a switch down here at the bottom, just like any other modular helmet, you're gonna go ahead and pull that and raise it into the upright position. What is unusual is how close this chin bar is riding against the exterior of your helmet shell. They've done that to allow you to more easily and comfortably ride with the chin bar in the open position. So if you're the type that likes to cruise with the chin bar up, the RF91 is going to be compatible with you. Now some other uh, brands solve for that, or even you know the HJC i100 solve that problem by letting the chin bar go all the way back. This is kind of um, a different way to solve the same problem. So because it's close to the helmet, it's gonna lower that center of gravity. You're gonna get less wobble, less wind pull, and uh, it's still right there and easy to grab should you wanna tuck it down. You don't have to reach all the way back. Now, another thing they've done to allow you to more safely, now, <clears throat> safely, you, you do have less, safe, or less safety with the chin bar up out of the way. Of course, your face is exposed, but to allow the, uh, the chin bar to stay put, they're gonna allow you to lock it out with this red switch. That's what that's about. So now, if, you, if this gets bumped or if the wind grabs it or something, it's not gonna accidentally deploy. You hit a bump on the road, it's not gonna slam down on you. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you wanna release that, you're gonna hit that switch down and you're gonna be able to close your chin bar again. Uh, the mechanism is metal. They have metal catches here. And one of the really cool things we notice is that they've actually done um, a spring-loaded cover here so that you don't have big holes. It looks nice and finished. even in the uh, open position, kind of uh, attention to detail there. Now another detail and something I've never seen before is the, the chin curtain on the RF91 
is got this hinge on it. So you see that spring loaded. That's gonna allow the chin curtain to stay put, not pop off or get rolled under the chin bar as you bring it back on the helmet like I see uh, on some other modular helmets. It's going to come out, it's gonna sit right there and stay put. And then as you bring this chin bar down, it's gonna tuck back into place. Very smart, interesting new features coming from that HJC ARFA department. Eyeglasses, compatible. Most of the helmets we're doing these days are compatible. People always ask, yes, <clears throat> helmet manufacturers are doing their best to make everything eyeglasses compatible. In most cases these days, the caveat is it depends on your face, it depends on the frame. At the end of the day, you're gonna have to test it out. Maybe let us know how it works out in the comment section below. All right, let's roll this bad boy over and check out this comm system integration. So you notice this panel, you saw me switch that off before. There are not one, but two panels. The HJC uh, smart system made by Senna, they have a new 21B and a 50B. Two levels, it depends if you want mesh, they both have HD audio. So in terms of music, audio quality, they're gonna be the same. The 50 series is mesh compatible and it also has digital smart assistant access. So if you want the Rolls Royce system, you can get that, it runs about 350. And it is made by Senna it's 50 series equivalent. If you don't care about mesh or talking to Siri while you're writing, go with the 21B. You're gonna get that same great HD audio quality, but you're gonna save a pretty penny. Now, when we flip this over, in addition to those panels where your controls go, you're going to see the pack for the brain here in the back. Integrated comms, double-edged sword. It's nice in that it's all tucked away. It looks custom. It looks like it came from the, sorry, it doesn't look custom. It looks like it came from the factory that way. Uh, the install is very simple. I've done this one in a few minutes. You can check out our full video on that HAC smart system. Um, and that's great. And they're made by Senna, so they're high quality. Uh, the drawback is if you already have a comm system that you want to run, you're running out of some space here. You're going to have to tuck it behind this panel. It is doable. You can use either a clamp or adhesive. It's just going to be a little bit further back. And then you can hijack those same speaker pockets inside of the helmet. Okay, so at the top of the video, I mentioned the near peers here, the ultra premium high-end um, modular helmets that uh, this thing's going up against from maybe show your shoe berth when it comes to quality and noise. Now I think HJC's taken some cues perhaps from shoe berth after reviewing this helmet and seeing this neck roll. This looks very familiar if you're familiar uh, with looking at shoe berth helmets. This is how uh, a manufacturer will really solve for noise. We get a lot of questions about noise, highly subjective topic when it comes to helmets, but what I will tell you, get a helmet that fits nice and snug, as snug as you can stand without discomfort. Again, uh, test that in your living room um, before you make a decision on whether or not you're gonna keep a helmet. The other thing to look for, a neck roll, and not any neck roll, neck roll that really makes a seal. You see how, you can't even see the cheek pads. This neck roll is coming way out it's going to isolate the noise, it's gonna keep the noise out of the helmet. They've even attached it to the chin strap here. So once you get into this thing, it's gonna be a nice, quiet ride. I think um, this thing is gonna get awesome reviews when it comes to the noise. So because of that, so uh, traditional double D ring closure, they decided not to go with a quick release. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up. We're gonna check out the interior. It's gonna take a couple extra uh, clicks here to get this stuff out because the neck roll is attached. So let's go ahead and do that now. See, they put a little button there. Let's pop that out. And we will check out the EPS, the speaker pockets. They have a channel for your boom mic, uh, a channel for all the wires if you go with that HJC SmartCom. Here are your moisture wicking antimicrobial cheek pads. Uh, HJC is pretty good about having different sizes. So say so you order a large, the cheek pads are too thick, just call up our rider support team and they'll help you uh, replace those with a thinner set and get you a custom fit. <clears throat> All removable, washable. Okay, let's uh, pull that sun visor out of the way. Now we have the speaker pocket exposed. Now we gotta pull a little cover here. If you're not running the comms, you just wanna leave those in, but if you're gonna run comms, that's how you get to your speaker pocket there. You can notice the channel for the boom mic and uh, you'll be dialed in. Like I said, most other comm systems will probably fit here. You're just gonna have to hijack these speaker pockets and find a nice mounting spot like I said before. Let's pull out this 3D foam comfort liner here. So when you're investing $550 in a helmet, like you might on this one, it's nice to know that they're gonna give you a five-year warranty. A lot of the premium brands have moved to five years over 
time now. Okay, there's your comfort liner. It's got kind of this nice honeycomb print. You notice there's not any extra mesh or any um, extra material hanging over covering your ventilation. It's gonna allow that air to get right onto your scalp. Let's move that out of the way. We're gonna see a multi-density EPS liner that is both channeled and ported to get that air right onto your head. And then those extractor vents that I showed you earlier up in the temple area do um, vent right here. So it's gonna allow you to scoop up that hot air that's coming right into the cockpit area for you. All right, that is the internals of the ARFA 91. Now, if there's a question I didn't answer, don't worry, Rider Sport is standing by over at speedaddicts.com where yes, you can always talk to a human over the phone, live chat, or emails. And if you've got one of these, they just showed up here in the States, so you are ready to order if when you get one. Let us know how you like it. Don't take my word for it. Leave your comment in the section below. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.